Uh, hola, es Mara de Amlo Vision y estamos ahora con Wilmer Remar, uh, o Domínguez Remar, o Domar, uh, Remar Domínguez, ¿cuál es? Um, hello everybody, my name is Wilmer Domínguez Remar, I come from Peru and I am living now in Barcelona. Okay, and so we're going to English now, <laughs> since this is going to be an English speaking channel. Uh, uh, Wilmer Remar uh, is a follower of um, uh, AMLO and uh, he learned about AMLO uh, via um, a, a sky, um, YouTuber named uh, um, Belmont uh, Casinelli, a very famous, uh, uh, or he used to be a governor in Peru a couple of times and also ran, uh, was a candidate for the presidency. And um, he dealt with the press the way AMLO is dealing with the press, where the press was blocking his, um, uh, all the news, all the positive news regarding uh, his campaign. So now we're gonna go ahead and ask uh, Wilmer a few questions about how he uh, came to know about AMLO and what he's doing. Okay, uh, Wilmer, ¿qué, ¿cómo fue que di te diste cuenta de uh, AMLO y qué fue lo que pasó uh, después de eso? Yes, uh, one day my mother visited me about uh, five months ago and she taught me about AMLO. And I go to internet, to the AMLO channel in YouTube, and I listen and view and look the mañaneras about the AMLO. This um, yes. every day meeting with the periodismo people, every day since, since uh, seven in the morning to eight about more or less. And it was a shock for me because never I listen a politician talking with true, really with true, with heart, speaking about peace, about the poor people, about justice, about liberty, about freedom, about all, all, all the values, all the most important values of the humanity. And I start to, to look everybody his channel and one day I decide I have to become a YouTuber because everybody in the world, especially in Latin America, in my country, in Peru or in Spain, because I live in Spain, everybody knows, must be known about this president. It was this exactly. history. Exactly. That's wonderful, uh, Wilmer, and that's very uh, funny and co coincidental because I learned about AMLO from my mother too. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I went to her house one day and I saw AMLO speaking and I and she says, you look, listen to the president of Mexico, he's great. And uh, and I listened and I was, I, I was like, this can't be real, this, this, this person sounds so genuine and so wonderful and it sounds almost too good to be true. And you know what they say, that if something is too good to be true, it probably isn't. So then I started to um, uh, watch him, and also it turns out that um, my mother has a brother that lives in Mexico that is deaf mute, and he talked to her in his sign language, and he said, uh, "I have lots of money now. I have money." Wow! <laughs> and for many years he didn't have money, and uh, he was not getting taken care of. Um, he's 60 something now, maybe almost 70. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so he started getting the benefits that AMLO set up for the uh, elderly, you know, the retirement benefits, which is incredible. So then I said, I have to do something because I looked in the news and I couldn't find him too. I said, wait a minute, or either, as it were. But um, I looked and I, and I said, wait a minute, he's not on the news. How come I hadn't heard about this? And then I looked in the, uh, I looked for him on the computer and I also couldn't find him. I'm like, what? And I had to call my mother or go to her house and say, mom, I couldn't find him. Where is he? And she says, you have to type it this way. 
you have to type conferencia mm -hmm. presidente uh, de Mexico or conferencia Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador or something like that or it wouldn't come up. So I'm like, what the heck? How come it's so difficult to find something so important and why if he's giving a conference every day, is he not on the news every day? Anytime our president speaks, we would have all the channels would close up. You know, I remember when uh, there was a presidential conference, the channels, you know, you were watching a movie and all of a sudden there's a president talking and interrupted your movie. And here, I can't find him. <laughs> and he's been doing this since January every single day. Every single day, uh, every weekend. He still works some of the weekends, but every weekday, he, he uh, has a conference. And so I decided, if, if I didn't know about it, how many other people didn't know about it? So I started asking people, have you heard of AMLO? They're like, who's that? I said, AMLO, the Mexican president. Oh, no, no big deal. I'm like, you don't understand. There's a change going on. He's about justice. And people are like, yeah, yeah, politicians. You know, nobody believes in politics. So I said, wait a minute. You don't understand what he, what's really going on. It's really happening. The changes are happening. I saw it in my own family. And still people weren't paying attention. They're believing all the, all the lies that are being told by the general media, by the, the newspapers, uh, the, the regular news. And they have no clue what's going on in Mexico. And I have a suspicion they don't want them to know. <laughs> Don't you, uh, Wilmer? Really, really, uh, absolutely. Because I go here in Barcelona about uh, yeah. one month ago. I decide to go to the street and ask a question to the people in the street about AMLO. And I have yes. some programs in my channel, Inti News channel. I have a uh -huh. some programs about these interviews in the street. And nobody knows nothing about AMLO, nothing, nothing, absolutely. So I say, but what happened here? Because really it's a very important change in the politician life in Mexico. And it's yes. more important not only for Mexico, it's very important for all the world because it's a new paradigm. Exactly. It's a new exactly. philosophy. It's, it's a completely a new system. But the people, nobody knows. That's incredible. Yes, and you know, the, I, I experienced the same thing, and so I, um, Wilmer has a channel called Inti News in which he uh, talks about uh, AMLO and also talks about, or talks to other people, well-known people like uh, Jalife, who by the way was banned from Twitter because they didn't want us to know the truth about what's going on in the world. He's, he was banned in Twitter on Twitter in Mexico for, for life because he is a, a geopolitical, like he's like this Nobel uh, Peace uh, Prize winner in the 80s. He's an uh, uh, educator. I believe he's been taught in Harvard and a bunch of other high-end colleges. He's multilingual. He's uh, been everywhere in the world. He's um, socializes with the powers that be but he's not a politician he just talks and explains about politics and so he really it impressed me that they had removed him from twitter so i said why did they remove him so then i started searching who is this halifa guy that they don't want <laughs> us to know about what is he what is he saying that they're trying to hide from us so because they blocked him i started researching so then I started, I, I translated uh, uh, one of Halife's videos. I also found out about Casanelli, how they had blocked him. I'm like, why are they blocking him? They blocked Casanelli too to be a president. The, the media blocked uh, Belmont Casanelli from being president by obscuring his magic because he has the same beliefs as AMLO. I listened to Belmont Casanelli and it's like listening to AMLO, like they're the same exact mind, and, and it's so impressive. And in fact, um, the first time I saw Casanelli's video, he was talking about how wonderful AMLO was, and I'm like, wait a minute, this guy's from Peru. <laughs> yes. How is it that he knows about, how is 
with them, and that was like in the beginning when I was starting uh, with my YouTube. And I said, well, they even know about him in Peru. And then I, I found Wilmer. Wilmer knows about him in Spain. And I'm like, how come all these people know about him and Americans don't? And so I said, I have to translate it. And it requires a lot of discipline, getting up at five in the morning, because I'm a night owl, I stay awake at night. And for me to get up at five in the morning, in or because it's five in the morning when he comes on here, for him it's seven o'clock or six or something like that. For me, it's five in the morning when he comes on. And uh, it's about a, a nine hour difference for me and Wilmer, so we can't get together all the times so when he's sleeping, I'm awake, and when he's a, a, a awake, I'm sleeping or working, or he's working and I'm sleeping, and it's a mess. But <laughs> uh, we had a hard time also with our video setup. We we, we felt like there was obstacles, <laughs> uh, unbelievable obstacles, right, Wilmer? So we finally agreed to do it uh, using this media. Uh, but um, I'm very impressed with Wilmer and and how hard he struggles and how he has been working very hard. He works a regular job. Fortunately for me, or unfortunately, I have a shoulder injury, and so I've been off work, um, and I'm supposed to be having an orthopedic appointment today for possible surgery, and then hopefully I can get back to work. Uh, but I'm a nurse at a prison, and uh, uh, one of the biggest prisons in uh, the world, or California, I'm not sure. I know it's, they say it's the biggest. Uh, we have um, about 6,000 inmates, and um, and there's a sister prison right next to us, uh, which is the one where uh, the infamous and notorious, um, what's his name, um, Charles Manson was at. Um, and it's, it's a very kind of tucked away in the middle of California, right in the middle. If you were to take your finger and put it right on a map of California, you put it right about the middle, that's where that's where we're at. So from every part of the world, of Cal I'm sorry, not the world, California, they send us their inmates, so all the way from uh, north, all the way south, and they, um, and they send us their inmates here. Um, so Wilmer, uh, what do you think about all this? Really? I am very impressive because never, never, never I imagine I can believe that one girl in another place in the world in California start to translate my videos, the videos from Jalife, from the other YouTubers. It was very, very incredible uh, situation because never I imagined this. But I think it's very important. Absolutely, Mara Corranza, I am very, very, very happy. It is very, very important the works that you are doing. And I'm very, very, um, uh, thanks for you. My English is not very well, you know, but uh, I am very happy in your yeah, work. You're doing fine. <laughs> really. I, I want to say something uh, to the people from United States. Please. Uh, pre people from United States. Okay. Uh, I think you are starting. Uh, wait a minute. We, we must wait something. Please from United States. You think you are the best better in the world because you are the more rich country in the world. You have the more powerful military exercise in the world. You, you think all you are the best in the world. But really, 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 the best better president in the world in this moment is the president of Mexico. One day in the oh, future, hi. one day in the future, you will recognize this. For the moment, nobody knows nothing. But really, he's doing history. Yesterday was the one of the candidates for president in France come to Mexico to know the work about AMLO. Now it's starting, everybody in the world is starting to know who is AMLO. Awesome. Really, AMLO is the best, better president in the world. One day, you must recognize this. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mara. Awesome. <laughs> For giving me this opportunity. You know, <laughs> I am so happy, too, because I know that 
uh, because I'm translating people that the um, the English speaking world can now know about AMLO. Because before I started translating, I found nothing in English except bad news from the general press. They were saying things that were not impressive, and I I disagree with them most of the time, except for when they just cover, like say, the inauguration. Which, by the way, was very impressive. I don't know if you saw the inauguration, or if you haven't seen the inauguration of the president, watch the full documentary or the full video, because there was a part in there that actually was so moving. Um, this is the first time that the uh, Mexican uh, indigenous people, the Indian people, went and made their own ceremony for AMLO because they saw and they had faith in him that he was the one that was going to rescue them from their severe, unrelenting poverty and abuse from the corrupt officials. The people that are in these indigenous uh, uh, communities have been forgotten by Mexico. They were concentrating all the wealth in the center of Mexico, where Mexico is. And they were concentrating all the money in their pockets, basically. They would take most of the money, and then some would supposedly trickle down, llover poquito. No, <laughs> it never did. The money stayed on with the corrupt officials, which, by the way, they are now being dealt with. The corrupt officials, they're not going to get away with it. When Mexico gets the money back, it goes back to the people from whom they stole it. By the way, AMLO created a program called a administration to return to the people the funds that were stolen. Yes. And this is uh, from uh, things that are stolen from the people he means. White collar crime where they are getting these uh, free uh, uh, forgiven taxes or in some cases evading taxes. Uh, uh, where the government officials bought themselves all these luxurious items, cars, airplanes, the presidential airplane, yes. that's another story. He's never, uh, he basically gave up the right to the presidential airplane and has it for sale here in California. He uh, gave up all the vehicles that they had. He auctioned those off. That money was given to the most impoverished people. He, um, Recently, I believe, had a, a sale of jewels. That money is being given to the impoverished people. He didn't live in Los Pinos, which is a castle yes. for, the, for the president. And he turned it into a community uh, recreation park kind of thing, like a, a point of interest or something that people could see walk in without an appointment. You can go see the lack of luxury, how the presidents were living if you ever get the opportunity, watch the Kinetic Cannons. They have a video that shows, uh, uh, it says Los Pinos Castle or something like that. That was the first time I found out. This castle, this Los Pinos presidential castle, has a, a, um, a surrounding um, buildings and all kinds. It's like a beautiful uh, park, well-maintained. It has multiple buildings in it, and uh, and it has uh, all these uh, old cars from the old presidents. It's got uh, lots of uh, pictures and old old furniture, except for that which was stolen from the presidents that they, the ones that were there that took it. But most of the um, stuff is still there, and then there's. Um, uh, what else? There's there's so much. So he made it free for everybody to see, so that you could see how well the the presidential and the elite were living off of the money of the people. And he said, how can a president or a government official, and actually public servant, the word servant means that you serve the people, not that you go there and take everything and serve yourself. And that's what they did. They stole from the people left them hungry, starving, where they wound up having to move to other countries. Do you think that the Mexican people wanted to leave their families behind, their children? Everything they know. 
to go to this country. I'm sorry, I get so emotional. And I, it makes me so angry when they say that Mexican people are taking something from them because they take the hardest jobs and they get paid very little. When they say, oh, but they're taking something from us. They're taking our, our uh, welfare, our food stamps and all that. I know that it they don't give it to you if you don't have documentation. I Maybe there's some things you can get. But I know when I needed help, when I lost my job, when I was between jobs and moved to a different area, I could I had a hard time getting it. I had to show evidence of this and that and my my citizenship and documents and everything. I don't understand how an undocumented alien would be able to get money unless they changed the laws since I did it. But I'm telling you, I can't imagine that they're getting anything from them. And if anything, they're escaping, or they escaped from, or they were trying to find refuge, okay? Just like the Central American people, all the people that are being uh, abused in their countries, also, I'm sure they're in the same condition that Mexico was, where the corrupt officials were taking everything and leaving the people without the basic needs, education, food. Uh, they they take all the money. They take all the all the companies that that build and uh, you know that uh, give them their their uh, uh, the things that are valuable in their country. They steal them, give them away to other people. They let companies come in and take the good goods, and they take the money like a bribe, and the people get nothing. And so everywhere the people are hungry, and in some cases they're being murdered, mass murders. I know in Mexico we had mass murders. 40, 40 young people were were uh, students that that had complained about something that was happening. Were lost. They've never been found. Forty students disappeared in Mexico, and the previous governments did nothing to find them. In fact, it is believed that the government had something to do with their disappearance. Certain president. Um, but we know that they are they they were corrupt, and it's coming out. And now the law is, Amlo has said, you know, he would rather just forgive them. But the law, they put everything into the law's hand, and the law is going to make a decision. And I think the people want justice. I don't think the people want what Amlo wants is just to forgive. They want justice. They want, um, they want the the government. To, to get their, their as much as, uh, they, as they can from the people, for the people, from these people that stole everything. They want to uh, uh, give it, they want it back. And they want them, not, not only do they want everything back, but they want there to be justice. They want them to serve time in prison. Amlo says, you know, let's just take everything away and teach them a lesson. Because he's such a humanist, he doesn't even like people being in prison. In fact, he closed uh, Las Islas Marias or something like that. It was a prison that was well yes. known. When he first moved in, he he uh, he closed the, the the prison, which was very uh, well known for having harbored uh, uh, prisoners of war that, in many cases, were found to have unfounded, unjustified imprisonment, and they were there for many many years. And recently, he's gone in and had the Justice Department check and see if there was actually evidence or just evidence that was created or fabricated in order to keep these people in prison for the uh, corrupt officials uh, to, to keep doing their, their thievery. In fact, um, another corruption that he took care of and is working on is when they, um, the voting, they were, they were, uh, uh, hijacking the elections they were uh, people would vote for somebody and they would just uh, uh, two times they took away the presidency for Mamlo he had won but they, they did something hokey in there <laughs> and so then they wound up winning uh, the last two Peña Nieto and was it Calderon or I don't know the, the last two presidents anyway they were um, they were evidence that they colluded and they lied and I'm sure that some people are in prison over trying to tell that that happened 
and it's just unbelievable that that uh, they're still getting away with that. But that's another thing. What he's doing is he's an attorney, in case you didn't know. And so he looks, he digs, he reads, he's a historian. And yes. he, he looks at the laws and sees where the loopholes are. And guess what? He takes it to the government and says, okay, there's a loophole here. Let's fix it. He gets the law and then he, he fixes it. For example, I believe it was in the 70s or 80s, uh, or I think it was in Calderon. Well, anyway, one of the presidents, uh, when one of the presidents was in office, kind of undercover, um, changed the law in Mexico so that corrupt actions were no longer a crime. In other words, they could go into jail, pay a fine, and leave. Um, and so he made sure, he found that law, he went in, and they're making sure that that no longer is possible. On top of the thing about the, um, he's also making sure that he's lo closing all the loopholes. No more uh, a forgive, tax forgiveness for the big companies while the little man is paying everything. Why everybody else pays taxes? Why do big companies that have the most money that could help the country the most, why do they get a break? Why do they, they think that don't have necessity, those little pennies that we give up, that the poor people give up, why is it that the rich companies that could afford those little pennies not pay it? You know, they could just throw the money up. They've got so much money. They've stolen so much from everybody. Well, maybe some of them work for it. Maybe some of them had a, a, a what do they call it, cuna, cuna de oro or, or a, a silver spoon in, in English. But um, a lot of them uh, have been corrupt and have uh, gotten it from stealing from the people. And, uh, and they don't deserve it. But you know what? If you work hard and you make a company and you're successful and you make your money, we are not against that. As long as you make it without trampling on, on the human man, on, on your on your fellow man. I'm sorry, the human man. But if you if you are doing things the right way and you're considerate of humanity and not doing things like this uh, Mexico Grupo Mexico right now. They're they're mining over there. They do they have spills and you know it's suspicious that last spill it may have had something to do with that you know, they're trying to take over that area of the of the water that belongs to Mexico. The the U.S. is trying to take control of that. And all of a sudden we have this spill and there's something about La Vaquita, Bla, uh, the whale, this extinct, extinct, uh, almost extinct whale that they're trying to protect. And all of a sudden we have another spill and it was uh, some kind of uh, acid. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of acid, but anyway. It's something very, very serious. And they've had multiple spills before, and the government did nothing. They didn't even pay a fine. Well, they paid some people some money, but if you get a chance, look at the videos of what that company did. There's people with their faces all mangled with scars on them, and they gave them 18,000 pesos, which is like, I don't know, what, uh, almost a uh, 1,000 bucks or something like that for disfiguring their faces it's incredible the the things that are happening over there but the good news is amlo because he's a, a um, attorney is finding all the loopholes he's setting a foundation so that when it you know i always fear that he's going to be killed because he's too good you know they say uh, i'm afraid that they're going to be afraid of him and they're going to do something to him. I'm always afraid for him. Because that's another thing he did. He said that the previous presidents had 9,000 people assigned to their safety detail. He says, that is crazy. So he took that detail of 9,000 people, 9,000 9, uh, uh, officials or, or uh, I don't know, army or I don't know what they were for. But he took that and he gave it back to the people to protect the people because there was so much crime in Mexico. It was unsafe. There was um, people being kidnapped, murdered on the daily they were counting the deaths, which by the way, that's another thing. 
the deaths have gone down significantly. And another thing he did was he instituted the National Guard because the police, uh, the, the military, they had like no, nothing set in place to protect the people. And the, and the policemen, the federal police, were so corrupt themselves. They were in the... Yes, they are the principal uh, corruption. Yes, they were the worst of it. They were doing some of the kidnapping. They were um, extorting people. Every time they stopped you, you had to pay a bribe in order to leave, or they threatened to put you in jail or take your car or whatever. And then also, there was all these little places you had to stop on the road, people taking money from you. The One time I traveled... From California to uh, Sinaloa, Zacatecas, Guadalajara, I don't know how many bribes I had to pay just to get all the way there. And then I just left the car there. I gave it away because it was not worth it for me to pay as much as I paid in bribes to drive my car to to Mexico. So I gave it away to a family member. <laughs> and it was a cool car, an El Camino. <laughs> but anyway, so... He fixed that problem with the um, with the federal police. Um, he uh, now he's getting rid of that federal police um, uh, section, and the ones that can pass the the uh, exams, which includes lie detector, which by the way is the reason they're complaining because they have to be able to say that they have not been doing corrupt acts. Now we don't want the corrupt police uh, uh, policemen going in now to the National Guard, which is a clean organization. So they've gone in and they've been cleaning up even the federal police. They caught them kidnapping, they caught them doing other things, and recently, you guys need to watch the news as to what the, the, uh, uh, the what do they call the uh, National Guard has been accomplishing. Uh, they And when they get something, they turn it over to, to the uh, Judicial Department and then it get, gets given back to the people again. And he made a new law that it has to be given back to the people within two weeks. That way it doesn't get lost in the paperwork. Like they were, they would kind of hide it and then later they would go get it for themselves. So nobody knew what happened with the, with the things that they confiscated. Like for example, the $200 million and God knows how much more that they found from that Chinese man that had so much money in his in his home because he didn't trust the banks. They nobody knows what happened to that money. That's another <laughs> investigation that he's making, uh, you know, happen right now because they believe it was. Uh, well, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to get nobody over here to try to murder me or something <laughs> or close down my channel. But um, believe me, there was some definitely some hiding of money in that case. Uh, they said that it was used for education, building schools and all that, and there is no schools, and there's no education. They, they, they're, they haven't made anything new. All they did was close it up. And the other thing they were doing that was horrible was that they were making everything um, for sale for other countries, other companies. For example, education with the little bit of money that people made nobody could afford to send their kids to school because they they made it so expensive uh, that maybe it's three thousand a month to put your kid in school and um, it, and you uh, at the most the people that made a lot of money made five thousand a month and so now all these uh, students, oh, by the way, that's supposed to be guaranteed by our Constitution. The Mexican Constitution guarantees you education. And they were not giving it because now they sold it to public interests or private interests. And they were selling it. And they were, in order to, to continue to privatize the rest of it, they were giving um, uh, a really hard time to the uh, educators. And, the, and they were trying to get final control of the whole education system. But AMLO said, no, no, that is a constitutional right. We're going to provide free education for all. Well, the, the ones that can afford it can still pay for the, you know, I guess, special stuff. But the basic education up until 
higher level education uh, is going to be free now. And also, and I, and what he's doing is he's getting grants because let's say the education is free, but they have no money to get there or no food to eat when they go. You can't learn if you haven't eaten. So then he also gave them grants, the children and the young people that are going to colleges, grants so that they could afford to live while they're getting educated. And then when they're educated, they have apprentice programs. And also, so he's, there was also this thing known as meanies. Meanies meant neither do they work, neither do they uh, go to school. He said, well, all they did was coin the phrase, but they did nothing about it. So all these young people are lost to drugs. They were being uh, sold into prostitution. They were being controlled by the drug cartels who were telling them, look, we offer you this money if you come work with us. They have no other choices. No education, no money. How else would they survive? So he gave our children up by just doing that. He has, a, away their education. He has a really integral <clears throat> vision about yes. the problem, the solution of the problem. That's the most important. Um, yes. Darlene Mara, um, I think in, because you are possible the best people in United States talking about AMLO. I don't know, he, maybe it's another channel, I don't know, but um, in Mexico the, there is a lot of YouTubers, different popularity. But the women, the women, they are only few, four or five, yes. no more, no more. Right. And I'm thinking maybe we can do a meeting, all the girls, all the women who... All the women? Yes. The YouTubers. Maybe, yes, oh, yes. To, to, to do a meeting, oh, uh, 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 talking all together yeah. about this, maybe I think it's very important. Because the... the um, the, the woman from AMLO, the wife, uh, is a very yes. interesting woman, really. I think it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's very, very interesting. Very intelligent. Yes. And a doctor herself, a writer, and I think she was like a political investigator and all that. Can you imagine? He's got the perfect woman at his side. Very She's a singer woman. also. She's a singer. Oh, she sings. I've heard her sing. If you ever get the opportunity, guys, watch the documentary uh, AMLO. Um, I'm not sure what is it called. ¿Cómo se llama la, la documentaria de, de uh, Este soy AMLO. yo. Este oh, soy este, yo. Yes, este soy you, yo. You must translate so to English. Me. You must translate yes, to English. This is me. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this this is yes. who I am. Is what it. Means. Mara, for, yeah. for for today, I think it's enough because we are at good time. But I okay. think we have to to continue talking about this because it's very very important. Yes. Uh, we can do I another program that. in this week, maybe the weekend. I don't know. Uh, but okay, thank you good. very much for for giving me the opportunity to participate in your channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Oh, and subscribe. I don't have enough subscribers. Yes, it's very important. Please talk uh -huh. about your channel. Yes, yes um, I uh, started my channel, I believe, in March. And I tried to catch up. But I couldn't. <laughs> so I I just started from when I started, sometime in uh, March, I believe. Uh, and I did a few uh, videos. Uh, but I don't have very many subscribers uh, because I also work full-time as a nurse, uh, except for right now I'm injured. But normally I work full-time and I work night shift. So I would get out in time to, to the, do the translation in the morning. But sometimes when I am forced to work a double shift, which occasionally happens, then I can't uh, I can't do it and still sleep, you know, get enough sleep and to go to work. But um, I really need your help uh, to subscribe to my channel. Um, I also have uh, AmloVision, English AmloVision on Facebook, regular AmloVision, <laughs> which is, you know, speaks more to the Spanish people. And then I also have my uh, regular channel, which is Mara Carranza on Facebook. And uh, and I'm an artist, as you can see behind me. In fact, let me show you this painting. Uh, this is a painting here. 
See that that is uh, the inauguration, um, the inauguration of Amlo, uh, which I was telling you the Indian inauguration. I haven't finished it, but um, I plan on finishing it. Um, and um, I can't really reach. Hold on, let me see if I can do it. Hold on. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Can you see that? Wow, um, wow. Yeah, it's wow. Big. This is the day uh, of with the with the original people from Mexico, yes? Yes, yes, wow. the indigenous people. Wow, and, you know, the very nice. Where he was crying. Yes, crying, yes, yes. He was moved to tears. I remember this and day it was very, very uh, emotional, emo emotive. Yes. Yes, it made me cry. It yes. Made me cry, so <laughs> I thought this is really moving. I really need to. We we we, to we have to talk about this day, please, in, in another program, and about the yes. why from Amlo. Okay. Thank you oh, very yes. much, Mara Cabranza. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. We continue in contact. Please. All right. Eh, por favor, amigos de Inti News, visiten el canal de Mara Carranza, Hablo Vision, suscríbanse, tenemos que darle todo nuestro apoyo porque se lo merece. Please, people from everybody in the world, visit the Hablo Vision channel in YouTube from Mara Carranza. Subscribe because it's a very, very important work she's doing. Thank you very much, Mara. And check out, check out Inti News too. And subscribe to his channel because it's very good. <laughs> You'll find out what's going on on the other side of the world. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mara. Okay, bye. Keep in Thank contact. You. See you.